So at Imagineering, we have this fundamental philosophy that it all starts with story. You know, it's just, I don't think there's ever been a more compelling set of story universes that we can inhabit than what we have in front of us right now. If you look around the Walt Disney Company, oh my gosh, I mean, the worlds of Star Wars or Marvel, all of this work we're doing is kind of geared towards this idea of creating emotionally meaningful, transformative, shared experiences in these environments and these places that you can't otherwise do it on your own. And not in a virtual way, not in a VR kind of wearing goggles kind of way, but in a no, 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 I was really there. I, re I, st I tucked that thing, I saw that thing, I smelled that thing, I tasted that stuff, it was real. And that's all Walt Disney wanted to do, was make magic real. And that's all we're still trying to do today, is find ways to give people these amazing experiences they couldn't possibly be having, but they are. So one of the key things that's really changing now in the way we tell stories is our relationship to the story. It used to be, sit back, shut up, I'm gonna tell you a story. And now I think we're moving into a world where our guests can have more of an active impact, not just as a character, not just as a role in these lands, but in fundamentally shaping how the narrative emerges and having as much or as little an active role in that as they want. The difference between authoring a story and authoring a story world is instead of telling a story, you're creating a value system, you're creating a setting and a context that allows multiple stories to emerge. So for the past seven years, we've been trying things, experimenting, right? Our first experience we tried was something we called the Legend of Fortuna, where we allowed our audience to really direct the story, right? So wherever they went, we kind of followed along and tried to get one step ahead of them to support that story with props, settings, and character. It was awesome. As an experience, our guests loved it, but it was super hard to create, and it would be almost impossible to do it at scale because for an audience of maybe, you know, a couple of dozen, we probably had 50 people behind the scenes in real time reacting to the story. But we learned a lot about how to engage people, how to invite people into an experience, and we had this one family, it was like a, a mom and a dad and two teenage boys, and the mom was like, am I gonna have to wear a hat? That was her thing, that was her line, right? Like, I don't, I'll, I'll, I'm in unless I have to wear a hat. At the end of that experience, that mom, who started the day not wanting to wear a hat, was the one with that sword against the throat of the bad guy. The real takeaway from that was not the fact that she made that transformation, but the fact that her family witnessed that transformation. Because when we did this debrief, the two teenage boys were like, this was awesome. We have never seen our mom play. And it was because of the way we kind of made context in which it was okay to play. We did an experience we called The Optimist that at its core wanted to really explore and understand the question of can we create an emotionally meaningful and resonant experience that plays out in these kinds of large scale social media meets real world meets storytelling kind of environment. We tried to create an experience that allowed people to engage at the level they felt comfortable with, but inside our story system, we had people who got on planes to go places and do things. We got people who just did it online and kind of followed along online. We had people that were everywhere in the middle between just going and visiting people, getting together in person, calling somebody up. The core resolution of The Optimist, of bringing the two characters together, the mom and the daughter, we didn't come up with that as story authors. Our audience came up with that. Our audience really was the driving force to create that emotional resolution. And when they successfully did so, they owned that moment. They took that world, they took that that story world, they took those characters and they kept going and they built their own stories and they built their own community that continues to this day around that story seed that we planted out there. They just did it without us. Sometimes you don't know what you're going to get when you let these things loose in the world, right? And that's part of the magic of it is that magic of discovery. We recently did another test, we called it Legends of Frontierland, which was really an experiment in emergent narrative. And there was a little bit of an economy that got set up inside the, inside the experience. The people's imaginations were so amazing, they created their own goods and services to start selling inside this economy. There was a guy who took like latex food service gloves and then draw faces on them and sell them as chickens to the other people in the experience. We could never have made that up in a million years as a predictable experience. Oh my gosh, it went completely 180 from where we thought it was gonna go. You know, that's the kind of stuff that comes out of these experiences, this emergent, imaginative play and storytelling. Uh, it's really, truly amazing. The reasons for doing this work are actually because we want to become better storytellers and tell stories that have more impact on people. 
If we do this properly, we can inspire a whole generation of people to understand that change is possible and take our world and make it a better place. And an idea of, of, of an engaged population of people who are using their imaginations to look beyond the obvious totally can make the world a better place.